in the name of my ancestors. Peace, forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this internet ministry. On YouTube, I am known as the Mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Rock. I hope you enjoy the video that follows this introduction. Again, peace forever and always, and respect you. Okay, peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, and uh, I am the Angel Snub Up 7. This is the Realities Temple on Earth. We're being a little informal today. I just had a, a quick thought on my mind. Want to, instead of putting it on pen and paper, we're going to do it on video. <laughs> All right. Now, there's a problem in the black community. And the problem in the black community is it's mind-boggling to many of us why we don't want to be independent from Caucasian people. Why we don't want to be free. Some of us think that we are free. Some of us think that we are independent. And I want to those of you who become frustrated, you probably already know this, but I just want to remind us because dealing with black folks is very frustrating. It's, it's, uh, woo! These black people can wear you out. And I want to tell you or remind you why it's so difficult to work with black people. What are the reasons? There are a few others, but we're going to concentrate on this one because this one here is probably the foundation that holds up the rest of it. Now, I want to give you a quick example. When a person goes to jail, now they was not born in jail, they was born free. Well, actually, if you are black being born in America, you are never free. But I'm just going to say, you just don't have any chains on you. So when you were born, you were free. There is no child, male or female, that says, Oh, when I grow up, I want to go to prison. Oh, when I grow up, I want to go to a mental institution. Oh, when I grow up, I'd like to go to jail. There's nobody in their right mind as a child that would ever say, oh, when I grow up, I want to be incarcerated. So, incarceration is a consequence of circumstance. And many times, we are the responsible party. We do something sometimes because we can be incarcerated not of our choice. But we're going to say, we're not going to talk about innocent or guilty. We're going to talk about incarceration. So you're free. And when persons first get locked up, when incarceration is new, since you know, listen to what I'm saying to you, since you know what freedom was, you want to get out of jail. You want to get out of prison because you knew what freedom was. So when you first speak to black people, the problem that we have in trying to relate to our people about being free is that they have never known freedom. They, they were not born into freedom. The only thing they know is some form of incarceration. Some form of being under the authority of somebody other 
than themselves. Somebody that don't look like them. That's all they know. So they think that incarceration is freedom. Just like your dog. You raised that dog from a puppy. The only freedom that dog ever knew was living in your house. That dog does not know anything about going out into the free world and catching a rabbit or doing something on his own. It always has been under your authority. Then, once a person becomes incarcerated, there's something called a person being institutionalized. Meaning, they have accepted that incarceration and now they just learn how to live in that incarceration. So, many of y'all think that people are really trying to get out of these jails and prisons and mental institutions. And they really are not. Because they become institutionalized. This is their way of life. So when we talk to black people, African Americans so-called Negro, those born descendants of slaves in America, it is difficult to talk to them because this is the only life they know. They become institutionalized in America. They, are, they don't mind the guards at the, at the prison cell. This is all that they know. They are just, we have become just like your pet dog. This is the only life we know. We don't know how to work outside of white people. But then these same white people, when they are unable, don't need you to hunt no more, don't need you to do tricks no more, don't need you for anything. They want to drive you somewhere and abandon you on the side of the road but they don't know how to do it. They can't get that job done. So the dog is able to stay at home and keep begging and keep begging. And then you think and you have the nerve to try to take over your master's house. You want, you want to eat steak. You tired of dog biscuits. I'm not comparing us to no dog, but I'm trying to give you uh an example, uh, an analogy of our mentality. We become institutionalized. And I will even go to say this. Even though that holler black power, hotel ashe, asalamu alaikum, praise Yahweh, even those individuals are still institutionalized. Because, see, you live comfortable in your jail cell. I know from experience. Because when I first got locked up, I really want to get free. But after a certain period of time, you sort of begin to like your incarceration. Because you still get everything that you want. You just can't go nowhere. You can still get the women. You can still get your drugs. You get three meals a day. You don't have to pay no bills. Get to play basketball every day. So you get comfortable. These people are comfortable in their jail cell. But one day, I woke up and just decided, no more. Because I'm better than this. The black people of America don't think they are better than how they're living right now. They are satisfied being institutionalized. I woke up one day and said, look, I got to get out of here. And see, another thing, when you have not been free for a long time, it is scares you. These black people are afraid to leave white folks. What am I going to do? That's the way I felt. I was afraid. I was locked up for a lot of years. 
and I was afraid to be free. Yes, I said I was institutionalized and I was a, and then when I thought about being free, I was afraid. How I'm gonna live, how I'm gonna take care of myself. Things have changed. All these different thoughts in my head. But I began to think and look in the mirror and look at myself, know who I am. And I had to begin to say, I'm better than this. I need my freedom. I can do better than this. To hell with these women in this place. To hell with their food, their TV. I don't want nothing to do with it. I want out of here. That began my journey to get free. By any means necessary. Within their law. Because I didn't want to jump the fence and have police chasing me. So I want to be free, but I didn't want nobody, the slave catcher, running and chasing me. So that's the problem with black America. That's the problem, Nation of Islam. That's the problem, Hebrew Israelites. That's the problem, Sarah Sudan said it. That's the problem, More Science Temple. That's the problem, Ray Hagen, with our people. They are institutionalized. What we going to do? What we going to do? They don't see themselves better than this. They don't think they are, they can become just as good or greater than the white man. Now, they would say it with their mouth, but when you see their actions, you see scared little children. So when I decided I'm going to be free, I just take my chances. If I die, I'm homeless on the street. I got to drink ditch water. I got to sell cans. Whatever might be, I have to go through. So be it. But I got to get the hell out of here because I can do better. Because under incarceration, you can't get better. It's to keep you locked down. It's to keep you in a certain position and place. You're there to benefit those who work for this system. So as long as black people are in America, you are here to benefit the white people in power. That's why the black community suffer. Their community build up. Everybody's community build up. But our steady go down because we are institutionalized. We are incarcerated. And those who are incarcerate, in, uh, incarcerated, they only benefit those who captured them. Another form of slavery. Now, when you do a crime, you should be punished. But we as a people, we have committed no crime to deserve what has happened to us for over 40 years. There's not a crime that can be committed to justify us going through what we've been through for 400 years. That's why I can't get with this God. And y'all making up all these old pitiful excuses why God allowed black people to suffer like this. There's nothing. And then these devils that done this to us, they run around on vacation in Hawaii, in the Bahamas, and we still suffer. So you're dealing with people who are institutionalized. They don't know, they don't know no other life. They don't see no value in themselves. So our job, for those of you who are awake, we need to rise up and become the example that you can get free. That you can do better than being locked up. Then when they see you do well and better, that will inspire the rest. But y'all too busy fighting each other, jealous, talking about each other, silly ass people. That's why a certain generation has to die off and a new generation be born to get the job done with y'all silly ass. 
and then they reap the reward that could have been ours. I would like some of that reward. But unfortunately, I have to work with others, and these others is just some love. Yeah, they way out in La La Land. Anyway, that's what I wanted to say. My time is up. Thank you for listening. Drop down your comments. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. I'm using comment approval because I'm tired of these silly fools writing, sitting, writing silly stuff on my page. I'm Audi. I'm Audi 5000. Till next time, y'all. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the gatekeeper of this internet ministry known as the Mighty, 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 uh, Angel Snub Number Seven, your brother. And hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Oh man, I would like to be your friend. There's nothing better than having friends. I'd rather have you as a friend than an enemy. Sometimes we have difference of opinion and we let emotion take us outside of our humanity. And we become like savages. So perhaps we should work on this little flaw in the human uh, biology so that we can be, I don't have to hope that we are friends, but indeed we are friends. I only have a few minutes, so I would like to first wish the brothers and the sisters of the Nation of Islam Happy Savior's Day. Praise be to Allah for Master Farah Muhammad and bringing to us a divine messenger and a divine God in the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Happy Savior's Day. I hope that everything has went well and Brother Farrakhan brings before the masses a productive, beautiful, and hopeful, inspiring speech that will encourage us to do great things as we are a great people. Happy Savior's Day. My short topic for this video, I raised the question, why do you call me an Uncle Tom? There are many brothers and sisters who in their mind believe they love themselves. They believe they love black people. And they get truly upset when somebody tells them, I'm an Uncle Tom. Well, maybe we should not even use Uncle Tom anymore because those who are familiar with the book reading, uh, written by Harriet Beecher Stowe, Uncle Tom's Cabin, you may find that Uncle Tom really was a heroic character rather than... Uh, a traitor of Benedict Arnold. So I would rather prefer to say that I'm talking to those brothers and sisters who don't want to be called a Judas, don't want to be called a Benedict Arnold, but yet their actions show that is what they are, but they want us to love them and, and, and embrace them like they truly indeed love us. I would like to bring up just a few points. When the Judas or the Uncle Tom, it's, 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 that's a habit hard to break. The Judas or the Benedict Arnold mentality, I call them dark Europeans or dark Europeans that call themselves black. When they talk about black people and they bring up slavery. They talk about slavery nonchalantly. Oh, and that was slavery. That's a long time ago. When they talk about slavery, you feel no compassion. You feel no connection they have to our ancestors. None at all. That's your problem, 
dark European Benedict Arnold, you have no emotion for your own people. But when white folks talk about their ancestors and the hardships, Jews or Asians or anybody, you can see the tears flow from your face. But when you talk about your great-grandmothers being lynched, raped, your fathers castrated, even Jim Crow, the hell they went through, we see no tears that trickle down your face. When Jewish people talk about the Holocaust, they speak in a manner that a brass monkey would probably cry. They try to tell their story so that you get emotional and hopefully you share in their hurt and pain. But you don't tell the story of slavery that way because you have no connection. You could care less about what they did or what happened to them a long time ago. You do not see, well, I'm pretty sure it does occur, but Jewish people who suffered the Holocaust do not encourage their people really to marry outside of their religion, but they damn sure do not want their children to marry and integrate with Germans. Even though today's Germans are not Nazis, you do not see Jewish people running around happy because one of their Jewish children marrying a German because of that history. Now you can get along and we can be civil, we can have business, but to integrate with a people or a nation that murdered six million of us, Jewish people said, no, no, no. It happens, but you don't see them encouraged. You don't see magazines and bulletin boards, and they're happy because a Jewish girl or boy married German. But now, when it comes to y'all, Judas, y'all Benedict Arnold, dark European traitors, you have Ebony, you have Jet, we so happy that a black man married a white woman, and a black woman married a white man, we so joyous, times have changed, things is wonderful, it's a joyous occasion. We brag, I got a white man, I'm married, my husband is white, my wife is white. We, get, we bring joy. That shows self-hatred. That shows you have no connection to your ancestors. If your mother or father was murdered right now, who you claim that you love, how would you feel if your daughter or your child married their sons or daughters? They did not have nothing to do with the murder, but they are the offspring, the children, and you're going to integrate and become part of the family that murdered your parents. That's what you do. Now, it's not to say that we can't get along. We can't have business relationships and things of that nature. But to marry, you are doing, you, have, you are overlooking how would your ancestors feel about you marrying the children of those who treated them like animals. You, you think there's no, you have no problem with it. Because you are a Judas, you are a traitor. That's the bottom line. So how can you show us that you love us when you marry the enemy? Jewish people could care less about a, the first Jewish president of Germany. They don't care. But you, traitor, you are so happy about Barack Obama, the first black president. You want to be integrating, integrate with those who murdered us wholesale. Look up this, the statistics. All the black men between the, especially the late 1920s into early 30s, how many black men was lynched? You don't care. Our things has changed because you don't care nothing about their hurt and pain. You don't care nothing about their death. You just care only about satisfying your sexual gratification with anybody, white woman, Asian woman, a dog, you don't care. You have no connection to your people. Anything a Jewish person does benefits themselves. 
They even have a homeland they can call their own. And they and they uh, move back and forth from America to Israel. And what they do benefit their homeland, Israel. You, everything you got, everything you do, benefit white people. That's why the black community suffers because you care and you have a love, sick love for the oppressor's children. So even though black people get billions of dollars out of the American economy, the black community suffers because the dark European trader, Judas Benedict Arnold, which is a great mass majority of them, do not bring their wealth, their power and influence back to the black community. They give it all back to the white folks. So while Jewish people are building, the black community is falling because Jewish people build themselves because they have a love for themselves. You have a hatred for yourself and a sick love for your slave master's children. Thus, they continue to get rich and prosper while the black community stays a ghetto and in shambles. But yet and still, you want to be seen as, I love black folks, but your money go to white folks and your love go to white people. Where is your love? Where's your money? Put your money where your mouth is. I don't see your money coming into this black community. You have the white man's name. Jewish people don't have German names. None of them. They hold dear to their name because they want a connection to themselves. You want to connect to the white man, the oppressor's children. So you happen to be John Jones. Abraham Lincoln Sr. Anything and you pass these names that you know was forced on your people during slavery. You happily pass these names down to your children. You have no connection to your ancestors at all. And you're proud of that. But yet and still you don't want to be called an Uncle Tom. In the manner that we're used to viewing what an Uncle Tom is supposed to be. You hold on to the white man's religion of Christianity that he forced on us. Jewish people hold on to Judaism, their religion, their belief in Moses and the Torah. You hold on to Jesus Christ, the white man that was given to us, forced on us as slaves. And you wonder why. And, and, and above all, Every time a black man stands up to speak to the racist Caucasian people in power and tell them and remind them of their evil history and how they continue to do us wrong before they can even say anything, he go, yo, nigga ass, want to defend them. Uh, it, don't talk about the white folks like that. We, there's, there's bad and good in everybody. Black and white. That's true. We're talking about the evil in this body. We're not talking about all people. We're talking about these specific bugs, these specific devils. We ain't talking about all. In fact, it was Uncle Tom's cabin that caused many white people to look at slavery and view it as wrong. It was the one of the things that was at the beginning of the movement of what they call abolition, those who wanted to end slavery due to Uncle Tom's cabin, this book. So we're not talking about all. Well, I'm not. I, don't, I cannot speak for anybody else. I'm talking about why are you defending the racist Caucasian people in power that force their name on you, that make you give your money to them so you don't help us because if you help your own people, you think that you'll be a, 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 a reverse racist. Now you hate white folks. You, you don't feel that you can help your own 
because you don't want to offend the slave master's children. And you wonder why you are considered an uncle Tom. My time is out. Think about it. Let's jump down our comments. Have a civil cordial conversation. This is your brother Tali Gimme Raw. And uh, excuse the horse voice. The, the horse voice. Uh, gonna take a little rest to get it back together. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. Happy Savior's Day, Nation of Islam. Respect you. I am the black dragon. Just want to be a little casual today. I just had a few thoughts on my mind. I wanted to share it with my audience because I love y'all like that. And I always want to keep our minds a thinking. I said it again. I always want to keep our minds a thinking. I don't want you to sit around and just agree with me. I don't want you to sit around and, and just disagree with me. I want you to constantly think because what's that? The law of science? That which is standing still or that which is not in motion stays motionless and that which is in motion stays in motion. We want our thinking to always stay moving. We don't want it to be rigid. We want it to be like Bruce Lee said. We want our minds to be flexible like water. Being able to take any kind of form like water. Did you know that when water becomes stagnant, when water stops moving, it is more sustainable susceptible, did I say that correctly, to disease. When water constantly flows, when, co when water constantly moves, constantly, damn, I'm not getting my pronunciations right right now, but that's all right, because no matter how I speak, I still upset folks, so it, it doesn't make any difference, because they understand what is being said, even though they like to play the dumb role sometimes. But stagnant water is more prone to disease. And also, as many of you know, stagnant water can produce mosquitoes. Mosquitoes bear their eggs in stagnant water and a mosquito is a blood sucker. So those with stagnant minds, your mind is more susceptible to disease and for the laying of eggs by blood suckers. Ah, woo, I love this. So when you come to the Realities Temple, this ministry, I want your mind to continue to move. And when we move together as one body, my thoughts become your thoughts. We become as one and we become a stronger organisms. We are organisms, but we become a organism. Singular. As your body is made out of cells. But it is one organism made out of billions and trillions of individual cells that make up this wonderful organism. Let me get to what I want to talk about before my 15 minutes of fame runs out or expires. Brother Malcolm was a wonderful brother. They assassinated Malcolm. Little did they know that Malcolm would be greater in death than he was in life. Malcolm, our brother, came up with this description. I don't know if he was the originator, the first one to say it, but I do know Malcolm used this as an example to describe the different mentalities of the so-called Negro 
which would later be black people. He said that there was a house negro or house nigga and a field nigga or a field negro. Of course, the the uh, house, I mean the field negro was the ultimate slave. The field nigger did the real manual labor. The field nigger or the field nigger probably suffered the most atrocity, the most mistreatment. Then there were the house negro or the house nigger. They were the ones closest to Massa. They got better treatment, wore better clothes. They had a more emotional connection to the Massa. They grew to love Massa. While the field negro or the field niggas had a hatred because they were out in the field, out in the hot sun from sun up to sundown, being raped, being beaten and whipped, wearing the worst clothes, eating the worst food. So they had an attitude toward Massa. But now you have the House Negro or House Nigger, if the master got sick, the House Nigger, so close to his master, he would say or she would say, Wow, master, we sick? If the master's house caught on fire, the House Nigger would say, Master, our house on fire? This House Nigger did not get sick. This House Negro did not own the house, but yet and still they have a sick love for their slave master that they uh, can feel and have this emotional sick connection of which continues today. There are those of us who may consider ourselves field Negroes and we, some of us call ourselves niggas. I'm a field nigger, working hard, this white man on my back, this devil, I hate him, blah, blah, blah. We are the field Negroes. I would consider myself, even though I'm not going to go around talking about, I hate the white man, this, kill the white babies, and all that unnecessary nonsense. I am, and I consider myself, a field Negro. There is no evolutionary state to the field Negro. A slave is a slave. A robot is a robot. The only, the only evolutionary step for the field negro or the field nigger is his freedom. I want my freedom. True freedom. Real freedom. Justice and equality. That's what I want. So the next step for the field nigger or the field negro is his freedom. I could care less. The field Negro could care less about his master. I don't give a damn if your house burn up. I don't give a damn how sick you are. Matter of fact, I will urinate in your damn food and hope that you get sick. I'll put poison in your food. I don't give a damn about my enemies. A man that raped my mother, that castrated my father, that fed our children, the alligators, and the... that. Spray our people with fire hoses and sick dogs on it. I don't have to care less about them and their children. Now for me, I still want to treat everybody fair and just. I don't want to be like Massa. There is a or an evolutionary step to the house nigger or the house negro. We must bring this to 2011 because the house nigger exists but now the house nigger is even worse. Can you believe that? The house nigger can actually get worse. And I want to give you this as an example of how the house nigger, the dark European, has gotten worse. Many of you have pit bulls, many of you have dogs, you have cats, but we're going to use dogs as an example. 
Many of you have a dog. We're going to use this again as an example. The dog has become, for some of y'all, house niggas or house negroes. You have the dog in the house with you. All that dog loves you. Every time you eat at the dinner table, you eat your pork steaks or your beef steak or whatever, and you throw the ball and the scrap to the dog, and the house nigga is so happy. Thank you for affirmative action. Thank you for the civil rights voting, voting rights or whatever. Thank you. The house nigga, the house nigga is so happy about the scrap. Yum, yum, yum. Eat them up. Ah. Thank you, master. You so wonderful. Pretty soon, I might get a plate. But right now, I have to eat out of a dog bowl. Oh, wow. How wonderful it is. So you have your dog. And the dog sits at the table patiently waiting for scraps. That's the house nigga. One day things will be better. We gonna get better scraps. That's the, the house nigga. That's the dark European. Now, you take your dog. Your dog is used to being in the house. But then you allow your dog to go out in the backyard. Now, for a dog that is used to living in the house, some of these people have it set up where the dog can actually go to the bathroom in the house. So when you allow the dog to go into the backyard, this dog believes it is free. Wow, I free now. No, dog. No house, nigga. You are not free. The white man or whoever your owner is, in this case for us, these racist Caucasian people in power, the only thing they did was to let you out of the house and put you in the backyard. So the, the next evolutionary step for the house nigga or the house negro is backyard negro because now they become even worse the backyard nigga or the backyard negro is worse than the house nigga because he's able to go outside in the backyard run around y'all ever had a dog and you let the dog that was in the house let them out in the backyard they get to running and skipping and jumping it gives them the illusion of being free but there's still a fit who owns the backyard? The dog don't own the backyard. The mouse is still on the backyard. The freedom of the dog is still controlled by his master. All these dark Europeans, all these Uncle Tom, well, we know what really what Uncle Tom means, but you know how we view the word Uncle Tom. So I'm just going to say it. Dark Europeans. These dark Europeans is so happy because now they can marry the white man. They can marry the white woman. They can run around in the backyard. But they don't, they have not made not one law that the white man obey. Everything about the dog is controlled by his master. Everything that is, that relates to this dark European, this Uncle Tom, his master control everything. They brag about their life houses. They brag about their education. At any time, the master can take it all away. Then they get upset. Why, master? Why you do this to us, master? Because you're a slave. You're a pet. Come here, boy. Let me give you the Congressional Medal of Honor. Let me give you some kind of reward. Let me put some kind of medals on your chest. You're a good slave. You're a good house nigga. You're a good pet. And they are satisfied with being treated like an animal. You're treated like an animal because of this sick love you have for your master. So the evolution of the house nigga is to the backyard. So now we, have, we still have the field nigga but now we don't have, well, some, they still exist, 
but the evolutionary period that has taken place to the house nigga is now he is he is even worse. He is in the he or she is now in the backyard. So that's what makes our job even worse. Because our people, a lot of them have become backyard Negroes. Think about it, jump on your comments. Man, time runs out when you're having fun. I'm already five thousand. Peace and respect you. I am the age of snuffing up seven. Your brother, uh, Talik Ibn Rod. Just want to be a little casual for these uh, 15 minutes. I guess it'll take 15 minutes. I, it's just a little rant that I would like to express to you. Um, it's very sickening. Very. I, I, I can't even describe it. You have Caucasian people, racist Caucasian people, who probably don't even know they are racist because they are trying their damnness to call black people racist. They want us to be racist like them so, so bad. I want to give this as an example. You have a murderer and that murderer doesn't like people calling him or her a murderer. But they were convicted. There's no doubt. They are a murderer. Let's say for instance, there's no question. They are a murderer. So they don't like being called a murderer, even though they know that's what they are. Their actions proven that's what they have become. So since they don't like it, they look at you, they look at us who have not committed murder and try to find something in you to make you or try to you know, try to paint you just as bad as them. So for instance, that you did kill somebody, but your killing was called justifiable homicide. So the murderer will come to you and tell you, I don't know why you talking about me while you laughing and giggling and think you so high and mighty over me when you kill somebody too so you're a murderer also wrong there's a difference between murder and what we call justifiable homicide while you killed somebody in the commission of a crime or for whatever uh, whatever reason you were stealing or you killed somebody because they didn't love you, or whatever your reason was, you committed a murder. And that's proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. No doubt. But with justifiable homicide, yes, you did take a life. But I was trying to defend myself. And trying to defend myself is not murder. I'm trying to, to prevent myself from being murdered, from a person like you. So I was defending my life or defending my wife or my children or my property from people like you that go out and commit crimes a commissioner of murder so we have all these Caucasian people running around trying to do their damnedest to frame black people for being racist let me say this very quickly there are black people who do things because of race but they cannot be racist black people if you look at our history we've been here for 400 years we do not go out and have not gone out in mobs lynching white folks we do not deny white people jobs we do not deny white folks the right to vote We've done nothing discriminatory to, towards white folks. We've done everything we can to love them. When you don't deserve no damn love. Now you want to turn around because we've taken all that we can stand and we can't stand no more. Now you want to get upset because at one time we had to keep our feelings inside of us. 
We had to be quiet because of fear. But now we stand up like men and women and tell you what's on our mind and call you what you are because you are a murderer. But you don't like it, so now you're going to turn around and try to flip the script and call our justifiable homicide for trying to protect our life, trying to stand up for ourselves. You want to call us like you because you the murderer. You're the one trying to kill us. Black people have not been prejudiced and show no hatred towards nobody based on color. If that was the case, then why are the Chinese in our community? Why are the Japanese and Mexicans and all kinds of folks in our community? And they're not there to love us. They are there to leech off our economic blood. The black man and woman, we as a people, we did not create race. We did not make ourselves and we do not call ourselves superior. You might have a certain individuals and you might have certain groups or whatever, but that is a consequence from being mistreated for over 400 years. A consequence of being hurt. So when you hear black people speak against white folks or speak against Mexicans or Japanese or whoever, it's not based in race, it's based on coming into our neighborhood mistreatment, disrespect, and legion of our blood. We are the only ones that's talking about loving everybody while everybody is only concerned with themselves. The Mexicans are making sure that the Mexicans are doing well. The whites are making sure that the whites are doing well. And the Japanese and so forth and so forth and the Arabs making sure that they are doing well. But black folks, the only one that is really multicultural because we have concern for everybody while we deny ourselves that everybody only care about their group to the left, their group to the right, their group going up, their group downstairs. You know, they selfish. Everybody else is showing selfishness. So now, the black man and woman, we're getting sick and tired of these ticks and these fleas on our back. So now you want to call us a murderer like you when we are trying to defend ourselves from being infested with these damn parasites, including you. Now, the sad thing about it, if you are going to use black people, if you're going to exploit us, if you're going to mistreat us, and we are your source of food. You're sucking our blood. Then it's just like those who depend upon the forest. If you are wise, you go into the forest, you don't chop down all the trees, but you don't plant some seedlings. And you don't nurture that forest and make sure that it's always available. That's the least you can do with your parasitic ass, with your leech ass, all of y'all talking about how great you are. If you're so damn great, why are you in the black community? Why are you messing with black folks sucking our blood dry? you so great. But now you're upset because we know that you are a murderer. And you want us to be like you. And we're nothing like you. When the black man, when these people, we are living in a nation that made slavery legal, Jim Crow was legal, all these things that's going on right now, you do it legal. And it's approved by the people. You had slavery in this nation for over 300 years. Ain't nobody did a damn thing. You enjoyed it. What did we get out of it? Nothing. Now the children who was passed down the wealth and the power, you had the responsibility to heal what your father's done that you enjoy. So you make an attempt to call the victim what you are. Well, where's my power? What laws do you obey that I make? 
or that black folks make. You don't do anything. You're not under our power, our influence. But we have been under yours for a long time and still the same things are going on to this day. And you don't like being called you're a racist and a hater and a murderer, but that's what you are. Your history that you wrote shows who you are. You are a demon, self-righteous, hypocrites, wicked, greedy, arrogant. That's you. And you want us to be trying to paint us like you when black people, we as a people, are nothing like you. You do not hear black folks, the black community, talk about let us go lynch us a white boy. Individuals and groups think like that, but we as a people don't think like that. Nor have why the white man was sicking dogs on us. What did black folks do? We took it. When you was lynching us all over this country, what did we do? We took it. We take all your evil for all these years. How long you think that people are going to keep allowing you to kill them, mistreat them, exploit them, and don't say nothing? Pretty soon it gets to the point I stood all I can stand. A quote from the cartoon character Popeye. I stood all I can stand. I can't stand no more. And so now that's what you're dealing with. But instead of accepting that you did commit murder, you'd rather try, you're going to denial. Instead of showing remorse and showing compassion to the family that you took their loved ones away from them, you want to be arrogant and high and mighty. I ain't did nothing really. And that's how these racist Caucasians do. You want to ignore everything. When it's clear as day what you want. So instead of straightening up your own act, you point at the victim family like they did something wrong. You're the murderer. You're the killer. You're the one that took somebody's life unjustified. That's why this country was built. It was built on murder and rape and incest and genocide and abortion and all these different things. You want to call us like you and we are not like you. We are the victims. Anything that we are is a consequence from what you've done to us in an evil and wicked manner. You should be ashamed of yourself. You really should. But that shows your lack of character, your lack of integrity, your lack of being honest, living in denial. You are a wolf in sheep's clothing, an angel wannabe. America, the beautiful. When America is ugly, it's an ugly and filthy nation filled with a bunch of sick people and your jails are filled with murderers and pedophiles and rapists and go on and on and you make more and more and more of them. You are dope fiend, alcoholics, sex addicts. You are in denial and you want black folks and others to be like you because you know that you've fallen short the glory of God. So it is pitiful and pathetic and you look so stupid and only ignorant, other ignorant Caucasian people and silly Negroes could jump on the bandwagon to make somebody racist when we cannot be and our history shows we as a people are not. These silly videos. These videos are so silly. Black people are racist. And you got all these people talking black folks is racist. Y'all some silly, sad things. Pathetic. You should deal with your problem. If you're a murderer, then seek remorse. Offer apology. And try to move forward. 
and become a benefit to society than a detriment. <laughs> thank you for listening. I just wanted to get that out of my chest. Uh, thank you for listening. And th that's the truth of the matter. That's really pathetic. This world it is, y'all. The reality is temple on earth. Man, these, woo, these people are so pitiful. Just want to be better than somebody else. Ah. In the name of my ancestors, peace, love, and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this internet ministry. On YouTube, I am known as the Mighty. Mighty, mighty, mm. Angel Snub Nuff Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Rock. I hope you enjoy the video that follows this introduction. Again, peace forever and always, and respect you. So now it's 2011, and I have all these fake, I must, I have to, that's how I have to describe them, fake Caucasian people who are either just ignorant of the brutality of what European colonization, of what white supremacy have done and doing right now, or they're just deceitful little creatures. However, while whatever form you are, you can't trick this one. I will treat anybody unless they show me different. I will treat you just and I'll treat you fair. I will give you the benefit of a doubt. But I don't go to sleep without having one eye open watching you. Now that's a lesson we should have learned from our ancestors, a lesson we, sh we learned from the elders. That you can't take your eyes off these people. Very few can be trusted. So they come to my page. And they want to suggest to me. Stop the hate. Here you are. You are the children. I'm talking about racist Caucasian people. White folks. How dare you come to me and tell me, why don't we stop the hate? What you telling me to stop the hate for? You need to be talking to those who created the damn hatred. I'm the victim. I want that, I want the crap off my back. I want you to leave me the hell alone. Who, who put who in slavery? Who is the one that created race? Who is the one that started white supremacy? Who is the one that called somebody a savage and inferior? I'm not the one. And who is the one that's still discriminating against dark people right now as I speak? And you know it and you even admit it. But you got the nerve to come and tell me, stop the hate. Stop the one who created it. I don't have nothing to do with it. I'm a victim of hatred. But it's easier for you to blame the victim because you are related to those who started the crap to begin with. And you have mercy and compassion towards them and those who are still doing it right now just because they look, they have white skin just like you do. And of course, those with white skin, since, especially since they do a good job of keeping their racism under covers, then you want to make this weak attempt to blame everybody so they can share the evil when the evil was created by one people and one people only. And you refuse 
to accept what you done, what your ancestors done. This is demonic. Then you turn around and try to tell somebody to accept responsibility and make proper choices when the ones that started and made this mess, they refuse to accept their responsibility and make proper choices. Because if you did, I wouldn't be talking right now. See, the bottom line and the reality is that you enjoy being in a superior position. You like the advantage that white supremacy has put you in. But at the same time, you don't like to hear people like me and others around the earth talk about it. You a good trickster, but see your tricks that was for kids. And we're growing up. We're not falling for your crumbs no more. We're not falling for your smile no more. Your smile that is quickly followed by a knife in the back. This is why you have a problem with reparations. Reparations is a no-no. You get very angry when black folks bring up the topic reparations. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Your host is his divine masculine brother, Administer Talik IBNRAD. No, she's evil. She knows she's wicked. She knows that she should be punished. The problem is she's sweating. She don't know when. Huh. And I love it. I like to see these liars and deceivers sweat. In America, it is controlled. It is ruled. by Caucasian people and some of these white people they come to us and they say why are you so angry why are you so upset things have changed I'm a good white person <laughs> I'm a good white man I'm a good white woman. We have good white kids. We good. Here comes the good white people. The problem is usually the good white people are up to no good. Because they are the children of enslavers and they have a slave master mentality when the black people when our ancestors were kidnapped or born slaves in America of course we were treated harshly very evil. But some of these good white people would tell you, but some slaves was treated good. Did you hear what I said? They would tell you, some slaves was treated good. 
What is good about slavery? They have a slave master. They have a slave making mentality. Look at how they live. They love pets. They love to take some animal and enslave it and make it a pet. They love to take animals that was free in the ocean or wild in the jungle and put it in a, put it in a zoo for its own protection so it can survive as a species because they know they have went all around the world searching for gold, silver, oil, and other material wealth and destroyed acres and acres and acres of habitat for the lion and the wildebeest and whatever animal they decide to put in a cage in a zoo. We're trying to save them from extinction. And in the process of saving the animal from extinction, it becomes enslaved. They put it in a zoo. They put it behind bars. We treat our zoo animals good. Now if you, if the lion or the cheetah or the giraffe could talk, would they rather be in a zoo in some boards or would they rather be back at home free? The dog and the cat, they run around and they put shirts and sweaters on dogs and cats. I treat my pet good. What is so good about having a leash around your neck walking up and down the street? Let us put a leash around your neck. Let us put you behind bars. Would you like that? Of course not. But see, these are the children. This is what you have to understand. These good white people. And this is something that the good white people must understand. You are the child. And you have been conditioned. Even within your gene pool. Your DNA, your makeup. You have a mentality of being a slave master. You have been brought up. You have been raised to believe you are superior and that you are some kind of God and you control and you can do anything you want to anybody or anything. So I will make slaves out of blacks. I'll make slaves out of dogs and cats and fish. And the ones that I cannot enslave, domesticate, I will put them in a zoo so I can see what they're doing behind bars when I feel like it. So I don't have to go to Africa. I don't have to go to Asia. I can just go to the zoo and see what the lions do. <laughs> That's your mentality. Slave master mentality. There's nothing good about slavery. There's nothing good about having a leash around your neck. And being made something that you're not. You are, you are a dog. Chasing balls, doing tricks. That's not what dogs nature to do. Dogs don't walk on their all fours unless they handicap. I saw a dog. It was born without front limbs and it learned how to stand on its hind legs. But that's an unusual situation. You have made the cat unnatural, the dog unnatural, the cows and the chickens all unnatural. And then the cows and the chickens are made unnatural, then you feed them chemicals to make them grow fast, then people eat them, then we become unnatural. You are what you eat, and if the chicken and the fish, the pigs, whatever that you consume, if they are unnatural, then you become unnatural, and you wonder why the human being is in the condition that we are in. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Your host is his Divine Masculine Brother Administer Talik IBNRAD. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, and welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Please excuse me if it seems as though I don't 
quite have my thoughts together and stumbling for words because uh, it's a little early in the morning and I'm still a bit sleepy, but I wanted to go ahead and uh, produce this uh, video. I want to say that I did not want to make this video, but I feel as though it's unnecessary because I always want to keep it real and honest with you as possible. And there's nothing like having the trust of another person. So even if something does not make me look good, per se, I believe that I should be honest and tell you about whatever it is that uh, is uh, afflicting me or has caused me perhaps to look in a bad manner or whatever. This is one of those videos where you might say, I told you so! I told you so! So I'm just going to go straight into uh, the context of this paper that I'm writing. I want to announce that yesterday, the 5th of November, the, today is the 6th I believe, that I did give my official resignation to the uh, Council of Twelve. I believe that is best for all those concerned. And the reason why I uh, resigned from the Council of Twelve is because after the fact I was given criteria to be a member of the Council of Twelve that I did not know anything about. And the founder of the Council of Twelve this uh, 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 this guy, <laughs> I said guy, I will, you know, I want to say brother, but you know, there are some, you know, I don't call everybody brother, because just because you said or call them brother, it's a certain criteria you have to, have to follow in order to be a brother. There's a certain qualification you have to be in order to be called mother. Or president and and this man TMOT does not fit the criteria or the qualifications for me calling him brother now you can go ahead and say it. go ahead and say it. I told you so I told you so I told you old Uncle Tom Negro I told you <laughs> get all go ahead all right get it all out your system okay okay the jokes is on the joke is on me all right get get I brother Brother Tali, look, look, man, I told you that it's an upper time cool nigga. I told you that he was going to pull a number. I told you. Okay, all right, y'all got it. But look, see, in my position, see, I'm an environmentalist. When I'm walking around in the jungle, I only want to hurt the snake that might cause me harm. I don't want to kill the garter snake that is harmless to me, it serves no purpose. It's an unnecessary murder. Now, the anaconda or the cobra, those types of snakes that might do me harm, then if I have no choice, then I must do what I have to do. And uh, so, what I'm saying is that I know that I was dealing with a snake. I know I was dealing with, uh, but you got to give people the opportunity to really show their face. So when you say what you have to say against them and you make your moves against them, then it is justified. This man had the nerve to come to my page and you will see it if he has not removed the comment because I didn't. He told me that I don't fit the criteria 
for being a council member because I speak against the injustice done to black people by the United States government. I speak against Caucasians and I speak against American soldiers. So if I criticize the government, don't support the soldiers, if I speak against evil and wicked Caucasian people that have done horrific things to my people, I don't fit their criteria. That's not what the council is about. And I'm like, well, then uh, I must resign. I don't mind helping you. The idea is good what you come up with, but I don't buy down to those things. That's not what I'm about. I'm against evil and injustice, and if that's what you are, then that's what I'm against. I don't care what the what you color you are, because I don't support John Muhammad. John Muhammad, the Washington D.C. sniper. I don't have no idea what was going on in his mind, but just because he's a black man, don't mean that uh. I'm going to support him. So you got me messed up. So when you're dealing with a snake, you got to handle with care. This man, TMOT, invited me to Atlanta, willing to pay for the hotel room and everything. I declined because I don't trust snakes. I know what I'm dealing with. If I trusted this snake, I would have went. I would have taken him up on his offer. But when you're dealing with a snake, you got to be careful. First of all, when you're dealing with a snake and don't know that it's poisonous, you got to, and if you're environmentalist, you got to check it out to make sure that is what it is. He's going to say on my page, the same man that told me I'll pay for your hotel room and come visit me in Atlanta, the same man turned right around and told me basically, if you don't like America, then I'll pay for the ticket and you can go. In other words, Nigga, go back to Africa. That's the first time I've ever been told by a black man to go back to Africa. You expect that from racist white people, but from a black man. Then he told me that uh, I don't have the right to quote scripture. You don't have no, Negro, you don't have no uh, ownership or no authority over the Bible or the Quran, or whatever, spiritual book. You don't tell me, I quote it all day and all night, because I know it better than your dumb ass do. Nappy headed fool. Oh yeah. I don't fit, I don't have, I don't, I don't have to, to hold my tongue to nothing. Because that's what you are, a patriotic fool. You live in a country now, you don't want me to talk about evil white people and the racism of this nation. You want me to change my page to fit your criteria. I didn't come to, I didn't ask the, you asked me to join you. You knew what I was about when you asked me to. But you thought for some reason I'm going to change, you're going to try to slickly try to change my way? It don't work here. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God. I don't mind helping you because of the idea is nice. But I'm not going to sell out my own, what I know is correct, for your boring radio show. Because that's what it was and that's what it is. Boring. You're looking for solutions, but don't want to change the mentality of the people. Once you change the mentality of the people, you don't have to worry about those solutions. Then the solutions that you're seeking ain't nothing but band-aids. Just like putting a band-aid on a gunshot wound. I wish you the best of luck. I have no ill uh, will towards those who remain, but as time goes on, you will see, not that the idea is bad, but you will see that this man, something is wrong with him mentally. You want me to change my page to stop speaking uh, against injustice by anybody, but you, but you don't change nothing on your page where you talk about how you hate black people and black people make you sick coming from the mouth of a, a black man against his own people. Calling these black women that have children uh, monster makers. Their babies is monsters. Black women can't raise strong men. That's a damn lie. There's a lot of black women have raised strong black men. My mother didn't even try and raise a strong black man. Because I'm not afraid to go out on the street without a gun. Your scary coward 
chicken ass got to got to carry a gun 24 hours a day. But you believe in God. Your God ain't strong enough to support you. Get the hell out of here, man. So, yeah. Go ahead and get out your system. Brother Tariq, I told you so. I told you so. Well, okay. I'll I, I go it. I'll go it. i go it. And I feel no ill will towards him. But I know what I'm dealing with now. This is your brother Tariq. Time run out. This was, put down your comments. This was and is the reality stuff art. Woo! Peace forever always. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. I'm tongue tied already. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. Angel Snuffed Up 7. Just being a little casual here, um, having a little fireside chat. And I wanted to speak with white people, especially. I want to talk to Caucasian people. Uh, just for a few minutes. And, uh, see, I want to talk to you about Uncle Tom. Now, you think I want to talk about Uncle Tom, the house nigga, the backyard negro, however you want to call them, the Benedict Arnold. See, for us, of whom you don't like, because we want justice in this nation. You don't like us who come to you open and honest, silver and quarter. I don't want to call. I don't want to call you devil. That's not necessary. I don't want to call you Satan. I don't want to call you demon. I don't need to call you nothing. I just want you to listen to what I'm talking to you. And let us have a civil and cordial conversation or discussion. And I want to be able to speak to you open and honest. And I want you to speak open and honest with me. And so that we can have an understanding. But you don't like brothers and sisters. You don't like black folks that speak something that sounds harsh to you. Because you have been conditioned to believe nothing is wrong. You have been conditioned to believe all the niggas should be satisfied in America. You got everything. Because on TV, you got number one. And on TV, you got Oprah. On TV, you got Bill Cosby. Cosby. So these few individuals make it seem or bring the illusion that the whole 40 some million black folks in America is doing well and dandy. But at the same time, if you watch CNN, which is owned by white folks or Caucasian Jews, if you watch CNN, they will even tell you that black America is in an economic epi epidemic because we this economic crisis have uh, caused black unemployment was high anyway. Now it is going up from in a 20 some percent up into the 30 percent range. So everything is not fine and dandy. No matter what little Wayne is doing or Oprah. But in your fictional delusional way of thinking there is no problem. And you also think that there's nothing wrong if white people are the majority of this nation. They should be the majority in prison and jail, but they're not. It's the blacks. And when they put you in jail and in prison, they give you, they pay you seven cents a quarter hour and things like that. Don't that sort of remind you of maybe slavery? But you don't, you're not, you just don't get it, do you? So, so, you know that what I say is true. But you would rather go to your black friend who has learned how to live in this discriminatory oppressive and hate 
feel racist society and you acknowledge that racism exists and your black friend recognizes and will also admit there's racism but since I can live in it it's all right see they're making it things is all right the problem with that is that things are not all right because if things were not all right what I'm saying has been said for the last few hundred years so many have died but this voice speaking these same type of words continue to prosper no matter what generation because there's an injustice and instead of dealing with the situation you want to run away and your house negro and your uncle Tom negro your black friends they help you stay messed up keep you in a state of denial I want to say this to you now some of your some of these black friends some of them are very loyal some of them actually they just have accepted being in a slave like condition and they are happy living in oppression but I tell you the majority and I warn y'all white folks the same way you know how to smile and stab people in the back your uncle Tom backyard Negroes house niggas they do the same thing if you think that Oprah if you think that Gail her best friend if you think Stepman if you think Lil Wayne Beyonce Jay-Z if you think all these people who lick your behind and you think and your best friends when they get around other backyard Negroes other sellouts other Uncle Toms if you think they're not talking about you behind your back you got another thing coming cause they do and I'm telling you they do but when you come around they get quiet but among themselves they talk about y'all like a dog because see you really train your house nigga and your backyard niggas too good because they you want them to be an American so they want to be a better American than you you force your religion Christianity on them they want to show you I'm a better Christian than you. They want to be like you. And they will smile on your face and take and be happy to take your place at any time. The only good thing about it is that they have your mentality. So even though you are pushed to the side, you still are in charge because they have your mentality. But at the same time, the dark European, the backyard Negro, these bitter auto, these niggas sell out that you embrace because they said, yes, sir. Uh, sir, ain't, ain't no racism, sir. Only the Ku Klux Klan is racism. Only the Nazi party, sir, is racism. They, yes, people, they scratch where they don't itch. You like that. They do the buck shuffle for you. And they smile. But they are worse for you than I could ever be. Or Malcolm. Or Marcus Garvey. Or Nat Turner. These are worse for you because on the surface it looks like it's all well and good. But when you look deep into it, they are the reason why this race problem continues because they know the truth that things ain't all right but they won't tell you because they scared of you and they have learned how to live in their oppression just like a, you have many women and some men who are in abusive relationships but instead of confronting the abuser instead of leaving the abuser they stay in the relationship because they learn how to live with the beating they learn how to live with the with the person making mock 
mockery of them, beating them physically. They learn how to live in it and accept it. That's sick. So you're dealing with your black friends. They are sick because they have just learned how to live in this society. They learn how to live among the snakes, the crocodiles, and the savage beasts of the field. So they are happy. Not really happy, because if they were happy, they wouldn't be talking, talking behind your back. But they are dangerous for you, because they keep this race garbage going on and on and on. Because they know the truth, but scared to tell you in your face. Because they will lose your friendship. While I don't give a damn. But these individuals are hypocrites and they are dangerous for us who, who are trying to be honest with you and for you because they are fake to you and they are fake to us. They cannot be trusted by us nor can they be trusted by you. Goes both ways. So I'm just telling you while you don't like me and call me a racist, which I cannot be. In fact, see, you use hate and you use racist. That's slick. You try to make the people that you've been that you've been hating for hundreds of years and whom of whom you uh, been racist towards for hundreds of years. You try to make the victim. It reminds me going back to this uh, situation of abuse. Many times you will hear the person that's the abuser try to blame everything. They're beating. They're making mockery of the person. Blame them for what's going on. Well, if you had had the dinner on the table, I would not have to beat you like that. If you had did this, it would not cause me to slap you upside the head. It's your fault. And that's very slick. Here you are. You created the hate. Because ain't no African, ain't no dark people hated you. You made us savages. You made us inferior. You took our land. You raped our women. You did that to us first. You did it. You created race. Black people, no dark people created race. You did it. And made dark people inferior. Made dark people savages. You are the abuser. Then you turn around. Well, if y'all black folks didn't rob the bank. If y'all black folks didn't drink so much. If y'all black folks didn't have all them out of wedlock babies. Finding some excuse to put it on the victim. When the abuser at the root of it, everything, is you. But you don't want to accept it. And you like your dark European backyard nigga Uncle Tom Benedict Auto buck shuffling, shuffling, scratching where they don't itch. You like them kind of black friends and niggas. Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell, and the list can go on and on. You like them because they are smiling in your face. But really, I'm going to tell you, they don't like you. They fear you. And they just accept it. If you can't beat them, join them. And that's what they have done. But they're not your friends, really. Because I'm telling you, these folks, these Uncle Toms, they talking behind your back. Just like they would do us. They'll smile in our face and then go tell you, oh, Talit got six guns in his house. I know. And they're doing the same thing to y'all. So I suggest to you, beware of the backyard Negro. Beware of the Uncle Tom. Beware of these dark Europeans. These Benedict Auto sellouts. You think you like them because they smile. They ain't no good for you and they ain't no good for us either. Jot down your comments, white people. Let us talk about it. But you probably don't believe it. 
Because they know, yes, sir, son, they got a pretty smile on their face. <laughs> get real, get honest, and we can solve this race problem, these racial issues, overnight, like they never even happened. Well, real close. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. This world it is. The Rowley's Temple on Earth. Peace, forever and always. This is your brother, the Angel Snuffin' Up Seven. And welcome once again to another exciting edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. And of course, I'm your host, Brother Talik Ibn Ra. The problem with YouTube is that it is filled with many, many persons that may be physically of age, meaning 18 on up, but in their minds, they still live as though they are either in grade school or just beginning high school. They have that same mentality. Then they come to the realities temple on earth. With that same type of behavior. And then when they confront me, it becomes frustrating because their mentality, their maturity is nowhere close to mine. And because I already know what has been programmed in their minds before they can even get their comment out good, I've already answered answer to what they said and beyond. In other words, YouTube is filled with children and immature people. And out of frustration, the only thing they know how to do is talk about your clothes or you live in a bathroom and a, uh, your dog got the mange and whatever. But when it comes to, but when the adult person speaks, they have nothing to counter or say about what the adult is saying. So, out of frustration, they start infantile talk, of which I'm not interested in. I have bigger fish to fry. Then you have those whom you think because they have age and are mature but they lack character. In their minds, they have, on YouTube, they become something because these immature type people join them. They feel as though they now have this great wisdom. They have this great intellectual sight. But even if that is the case, because they lack character, because they lack a true sense of who they are, it still don't mean nothing. So this brings me to uh, a gentleman of whom I used to belong to his council of 12, this T-M-O-T-O-F-G-A. It stands for the minister of the God and Christ or something, whatever. Uh, a, a black man that hates himself. And you see, I was always taught that you can't,
keep your friends close, but you keep your enemies closer. So I want to see what you're doing. Just because you got me blocked, TMOT, just because uh, there's no subscription, you're not subbed anymore, don't mean I'm not watching and seeing what you do because you become an enemy to my people. So I want to know what you're doing. So somebody puts on this man's page that they heard that I was talking about him. Of which is good. I'm pretty sure he gets a lot of emails saying that, you know that snut nut, nut dude, he talking about you. And so I went to the this particular fella's page to see what's going on with him and TMOT is replying to his comment saying that I'm not going to stoop to his level. You know I know how to take out the trash. Say what? Stoop to my level. And if anything, I'm stooping to your level. You the one came to my page and told me to go back to Africa. How in the hell how the hell, yeah, you stupid to my level. I never told you, I never called you no names. I never told you to, uh, that you some Uncle Tom and some other coon and a shine or whatever. You came to my page because you don't like my opinion and called me out of my name in the public. Then I'm supposed to be part of your council of 12, but you become so angry. You can't wait, you can't send me a, uh, a private email. You won't go out in the public. I'll buy a ticket for your nigger ass and send you back to Africa or whatever. You don't deserve to talk about Jesus. You give it to me. So if anybody's stupid to any body's level, I'm stupid down to your right here level. And I don't mind because it's exciting to me. I can hang with the big dogs too. I can get down too. And see, that's what some of y'all messing with me. You really tip it. I don't say that I'm some man of God that I, I'm, uh, 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 I'm in, involved in some kind of box criteria. I can cuss your ass out if I want to. I can be ghetto and a nigga just as much as you can do. I can get down too. There's nothing stopping me. I don't have nobody and I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. That's why people can listen to the Reality is temple on earth because I'm going to be real with you. I'm honest with you. I work with Louis Farrakhan for real and I got the paperwork and I put it on video so y'all can see it. Everything that I tell you, I'm real about it. You don't tell me till I'm not going to drop to your level and you taking out the trash. So now, you're not going to drop to my level and I'm a nobody you gonna take out the trash and you gonna call me trash and you think I'm not gonna respond so you definitely out of your mind taking out the trash let me tell you something Negro Uncle Tom bum gun tearing coward you a coward let me tell you something on this video bring your ass here matter of fact tell all your people all your thousands of viewers that support your nigga ass, all of them. Remember, you don't like cussing. You don't like profanity. Let us be civil and cordial. So you bring that here. All your, all your viewers, all your slaves that you have made and deceived, all of y'all come here and by myself. I don't need no, none of my viewers to help me. I will smash all of you in here. And everybody will see it. But you're not going to come because I'm not going to drop on your level. If you're not going to drop on my level, then why did you put that comment on that man's page in the public? If anybody, if anything, you would have said, I'm just going to let that go. I'll just leave it alone. I, I have no comment. But you made a comment because you are on the level. And the same trash you calling me, you are getting worse because you're a fake-ass Christian. You're a bum. I can whoop you verbally. And I bet you I can whoop you physically. That's why you gotta carry a gun. We about the same age, but I get bet I bet one thing, I'm in better shape than your ragged ass is. Ain't no doubt.
God about that. So if I was you, I would always carry my gun because I bet you a weak ass punk. I'm not no jerk. And that's another thing these people keep bothering me. You really think that I'm something to pray with? I'm not nobody to pray with. I mess with the department. I took on the Department of Mental Health, the state of Missouri, with no money and kicked them in the ass when they said it was impossible. So I know the impossible can be made possible. Silly y'all. Bring your ass here. Bring your comments and whatever. But you're not. Your best bet is do like everybody else. Sit back in the cut. Call me names. Or just shut the hell up. That's the best bet. Wow. This is beginning to be a wonderful day. <laughs> this is about Johnny Give Me Raw. Jump down your comments. This was and is. The reality is temple on earth. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, and welcome once again to another exciting edition <laughs> of the Realities Temple on Earth. Before I speak ill of anyone, regardless if it is a Caucasian person, a fellow person who uh, is a descendant of slaves born in America or an Asian person or anyone. I don't like speaking ill of anyone. There's enough negativity in the world. I like positive things. I, I love, you know, I love human beings to love one another. That's, but that's, that's not the type of world we live in. And there are those who make living in the world worse due to their attitude. I explained in a prior video in that one of our worst enemies is ourselves. Black men and women. That's our main problem is ourselves. We want to bang on the beast and the number one of the, the number one beast is the beast in self. That's our downfall. If you look and study our history, that's our problem. We have we are victims of jealousy and envy and self hatred and all them. Once we get over that hump, we be on our way. That's the number one beast we got to bang on. So you say you might say, well, brother Talib, then the white man. This racist Caucasian, he should be second in line. No, he's he's not. How he's not second in line? Damn well, then when we get to start banging on the beast, <laughs> I'm ready to bang on me some beast. <laughs> calm down, fella. Just you'll you'll be able to bang on the beast. Just calm down. He's not our second priority. Second priority is a member of our own family. Black people that look like you and me, but they have sold and willing to sell us out because of a sick love they have for racist Caucasian people and this nation that has done horrendous things to our ancestors. They don't have no feelings for our ancestors. They wish they were Caucasian. They want to be part of that which oppressed our people in the past and continue to oppress us today. Because they feel the closer they can get with them, in some way, things will be better. The perfect example of this type of mentality, and like I said, I don't like 
speaking ill of people unless I'm really sure of what they are. Otherwise, it's a guess. And I don't like to go around apologizing all the time. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that about you. I just didn't know. I want to be for sure. But we have a man on YouTube that has become an enemy of black people. No doubt. So I can say this. I can say this with a confident heart. And he is a perfect example of our second beast we need to bang on. And that is the type of black person that we call Uncle Tom. Cool and shine a, a black overseer working not in behalf of his own people but wishing to build up those that oppress us as a people. Those who uh, have harmed us and hurt us and continue to do so. Such a person as this man calling himself T-M-O-T-O-F-G-A. The world, one of the world's greatest uncle times. And you don't have to take my word for it. Just go to this Negro's page. On the Negro's page, the only thing he has close to 200 videos. And all he talks about is the poor condition of black people in this country. Blaming the victim. Never the perpetrator. Because he's so ignorant he don't understand this was done by design. And we are victims. There's a reason for behind all this. They done it on purpose. He don't care. Because he has a severe slave mentality. He has the type of mentality where he will kill us man. He's the kind that will shake your hand. And if the enemy came to him and told him, I want you to go undercover. Or I want you to join the military to kill these niggas. He'll be happy to do it because God bless America. Man that I love. I know you ain't did nothing for me, but that's all right. And I know that you hung me, hung my grandparents. And all that kind of good stuff. But it don't mean nothing. Because. And I know that you don't show no kind of remorse. And all like that. But I still love you. That's our second beast. That we need to bang on. And expose. You don't want your children. Listening to people like that. It's detrimental. And they get caught up. In that craziness. TMOT don't represent independent black people. He wants you to become successful and be good to benefit your oppressor. He don't want you to grow your own food. He don't want you to educate your children. He wants you to be a good boy. Be a good girl. That's why he upset. He's upset because you're not being good boys and girls for your master. Y'all being bad having all them babies. Master don't like y'all on that welfare like that. Having all them kids like that. He just had a radio talk show. Had a police officer on there. The only thing they talked about was how you're going to catch the criminals and put them in jail. What about changing the mentality of the people? Ain't nobody born no damn criminal, I don't think. I ain't seen no little infant. And that's a, that's a, that's good, good, shoot, and steal, and that. Ain't nobody born like that. That's a thought process. Change the condition of the people. 
There's no reason why black people in America should be suffering the way they do. There's no reason for it. And there's no reason why we have to beg and scrape the government for any type of aid when the United States of America made trillions of dollars off free black slave labor and underpaid labor. We got to beg them for resources, you know, demons, and this Negro. Then he talk about how black women bear children that are monsters. So that makes her a monster, right, nigga? You a sick, sick puppy. Screwed up in your head. The world's greatest Uncle Tom. And I know they call Martin Luther King an Uncle Tom. But see, uh, Martin Luther King was just using a method. He didn't support the Vietnam War. He didn't support evil and injustice and wrongdoing. But this Uncle Tom, this real Negro does. Oh, it's, it's sickening. Running around in, that, in his little car. Drive time. Drive time. Because he wish he could take out his gun and shoot the poor brothers and sisters on the street. Hollering about God. And he's so scary, he got to carry a gun 24 hours a day. But you believe in God. If I believe in God, I don't need no damn gun. God should be sufficient for you. You don't care about no God. Full of self-hatred. Y'all know where I'm coming from. Just check out the dude's page. Complain about black people. That's all he complained about. His own. Never said nothing good about us. Never. The world's greatest Uncle Tom. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. This was and is. Try, I'm trying not to be one. Peace. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the gatekeeper of this internet ministry. I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Love 7, your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Please excuse me, my voice is a bit sore and I am a little fatigued. But I felt as though this talk needed to be said as soon as possible. So please bear with the hoarseness of my voice as well as my sleepiness. <laughs> I would like to proudly announce that this ministry is gaining more and more support regardless to the activities of those who dislike me the people are able to look beyond the drama beyond the madness beyond the name calling beyond so many things and concentrate on the message and ignore the fault and the error of the man so this ministry Regardless to my poor character, <laughs> it continues to grow. So if you watch and keep count of the friends and the subscribers to this ministry, you will notice losses, but for every loss, you see great increase. And really, it's not about me. The message it is time for the message to be born. I'm just the bearer of that message. If I decided to quit today, someone would take up the reign of this horse 
and keep riding. I am not the author of what is being said here. The author is that which brought us into existence. And I'm just reminding you that you know it already. Did you hear what I, what I told you? I'm just reminding you that you know it already. Not teaching you anything. When you begin to think for yourself, use your brain, analyze situations, we'll all come to the same conclusion. So there is no need for a leader. There's no need for me to try to convert anybody. The kingdom of heaven is in you. You don't have to worry about what Reverend Mudflap have to say. You don't have to worry about Pastor so-and-so and minister so-and-so, you don't have to worry about what I have to say. Open up your mind. It's already there in you. So this ministry is growing. Perhaps a little quicker than I thought. I am shocked and I'm surprised. But I am building alliances. I am building friends. This ministry has now become much more than myself. Although I am the spokesman, although I am its creator, the reality, the reality's temple on earth ministry is much more than myself. So since it is more than myself, I don't run nothing. After meeting with those who support me, they decided to tell me if I want to continue to keep my job as spokesman <laughs> for this ministry, then I must announce that this so-called Angel Snub Nub Seven T Mont War is over. In fact, really, it never was a war. I just decided to separate myself from a person, not saying he's a bad person, wonderful family man, all those different things, wonderful husband, I saw him as a caring father, all those things, not saying, just a difference of opinion. And we have taken a difference of opinion and taken it to a point is out of control. And I do not want to be seen as one out of control. We need to stay in control. So I wish to announce, regardless to what t -Mont says, this ministry will not respond. No more. That's it. I do not hate and have never and will not hate this man. I'm not here to hate and to hurt black people. So I want to make that clear. Again, there will be no more responses to anything t -Mont says or anything t -Mont does. We have on our agenda bigger fish to fry. Enemies that are Powerful. So we need all the energy we have for the well, and we need to stop wasting our time on petty things. This is petty. I need to add there are faceless people, and I'm very shocked. Y'all should know better, but some of y'all hate me so bad. Some faceless person running around, threatening people, talking about they support Angus Snub Nub 7, threatening people and whatever. They are faceless. You think that is me. I don't play games like that. I had uh, an account called Quacky Ducks. It was a faceless account. I wanted to play with people because they blocked me. So I used Quacky Ducks to play with folks. And at one time, 
the Black Dragon account was used for the same purpose. But these people knew it was me. I mean, all they had to do is look. But these other faces accounts, that is not me. I'm not interested in that nonsense anymore. I am calling the people to action. Not to play in the sandbox children's games. I'm not here and have never been here to play games. This is serious business. Running around here threatening folks, hiding behind a picture. I don't do cowardly stuff like that. But there are those who are still going to say, that's Angel Snub Nub. That's it. Well, you just keep doing that. And you watch the subscriptions climb. You watch me continue to get stronger and stronger. Not interested in that foolishness. So I would like to say to this uh, judge person, advise me or advise you to stop the foolishness. I agree. So this conflict, see, some people can't handle the real truth. They can't handle criticism. They can dish it out, but they can't take it. I did not disrespect nobody. I just asked civil courier questions. And if you call somebody a name, you should be able to handle the same type of name calling. But they can't. So, I would be the bigger person. And I would say, I am not involved. Plus, I want my job. Those who have come forth to say, I want to help you in your work. Not in your foolishness, Talik. Leave that team out alone. I don't want to be part of that. But I want to be part of building the reality's temple. So if you want to help me, if you want my help, then let that nonsense go. If you want your job as spokesperson and the face of this ministry, then you got to let that go. No problem. Because if you want to come here and help me build this ministry, I don't have time for it. We got bigger things to do. So once again, there will be no more responses no matter what team I say, no matter what he do, I will not say nothing. That's a promise, Scout's honor. I'm done. Those who support me say no. And I agree. Once again, there are faceless people running around trying to keep this foolishness stirred up. Don't fall for that garbage. Do your work. Whatever you're doing on your channel, if it is positive, if it is good for our people, do your work. You don't like me, just leave me alone. I don't like you, I'll leave you alone. But if we're trying to help our people, not hurt our people, then just do your work. Do the work. Let's get some action going. Because if you, if you are here to help uplift us out of our hard condition, how can I be angry at you? We all have our different ways of doing things. So be it. As long as it is positive, righteous, and good for us, hey, how can I be angry at you? And that's all that I wanted to make clear this conflict which really it never was I never defriend unserved block Tima I just decided it was better that I should not inter interact with him and it seemed as though it happened anyway and I guess that's my fault 
Because I should have just let what they said. Let old birds die. Let old goats die. What's that old saying? <laughs> Y'all smarter than I am. <laughs> but it is over today. You will not see no more words coming from me about this man. I wish him success. I wish him the best of luck and hoping that he can cause positivity and bring good to our community. And these faceless trolls, if you really do, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether you're a troll or not, but if you support me, then Send your donation. Share the videos. Spread the word. That's how you support me. You don't support me by threatening folks. Okay? Give me a call. Talk to me. Send me an email. We don't have to do it. Success is right in front of us if we make the correct choice. So I got to do this because I want to make the correct choice. I'm not a troublemaker. I'm here to love my people, not hate them. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Tali, even Rob. And uh, let us try to understand one another, have compassion for one another, and let us go on and be the great people I know we really are. Thank you again for listening. I, I, I'm uh, tongue-tied. I'm already 5,000. Woo! This wasn't it. The reality is temple. I don't know. <laughs> Peace forever and always. I'm just going to be a little casual with us right now. And this video should be very short. I'm going to make it short. <laughs> I want to talk to us about troublemaking faceless cowardly trolls and I want to address this one time only and be done with it because really really it's not an issue but I just want to make a video about it about the topic so I don't have to explain nothing I just share a video with whoever on the topic but I want to make perfectly clear about my position as far as uh, the brother uh, T-Mott, our brother Sarah Sumseti, and our brother J.T. Raleigh is concerned. My position as far as uh, I view them or how they see me. I, I don't know how they see me, but I will tell you my position on these brothers because we have and I've seen these faceless troublemaking cowardly trolls go around talking a bunch of crap trying to spread poison well the poison ends here because from me I will tell you I cannot speak about them but I will tell you my position and I will begin quickly with Brother t -Mont. In fact, I will start off by saying this about all of these brothers. I have nothing against Brother t -Mont. I have nothing against Sarah Sudan Seti or J.T. Riley. Now, they can hate me. They can dislike me. However, it makes me no difference. But they have done nothing to me. Just because you disagree with my opinion or my actions for whatever reason, because I've never, I never intentionally try to harm anybody. That's not my thing. I don't try to go around hurting people. That's not my thing. But if that's how they want to feel about me, then so be it. But I have nothing against Brother t -Mont, Brother Derek Grayson. I visited Brother Gary, uh, Derek Grayson last year. We struck up a, uh, some would call it a friendship. 
or an association. That association did not work. And uh, I decided to separate myself from Brother t -Mont. This is not to say that he's not a decent person. He has a wonderful family. His wife and children and family and friends treated me great. That's not to take away from that. But his message, I cannot uh, prescribe to. That I cannot do. Because I feel as though it is self-hating. I feel as though he says that he can work with black people, but his council of 12 shows that he cannot work with those who don't think like him. So he will be alone because he cannot mesh with others unless they absolutely think the way he does. They have to be Christian or whatever. And his council of 12 does not exist no more because he cannot do it. And I view him as a person that suffers from grandiosity, being better than others. You know, you talk about other people, and especially black folks. You have gotten and you have become secure in your oppression. So you want others to be better, not better for us as a people, but just so that we can gain material things. They think that it's all about money. It's not about money. It's about justice. And what is right for us as a whole entire people. It's not about money. It's about justice. It's about respect. It's about honor. It's about having character. That's what it's about. So. That being said. Along with his negative. Uh, talk against black people. That's the way I see it. And many others see it. I don't want to be associated with that. No more, no less. Has nothing to do with dislike or hatred of him. I just cannot. He has done nothing to me to deserve uh, hatred or being disliked. He just has a different of opinion. And he does what he has to do. And we do what we have to do. And uh, time will show who is right or who is in error. I have nothing against Brother Sarat Sudan I have never said I have never said out of my mouth in no video where I shown hatred or dislike for Sarat Sudan Sedi. I like Sarat Sudan Sedi. He reminds me when I was a younger person, full of fire. But I just believe that that fire is being misdirected to a certain point. And I want him to, and others like him, when you're dealing with a vicious beast, you have to deal with them smarter and wiser. I only express myself to, with uh, Seti, that which I disagree with. No more, no less. If Sarah Sudan Seti, if Brother Seti had a problem with Angel Snuffin' Up 7, he would have made a video talking about me. He don't need no faceless, cowardly troll to talk about him. Talk about me, or uh, what he might say. I, ooh, I'm all flip-flop. I never said that uh, I agreed with Brother Seti. When I met Brother Seti, I liked a lot of what he had to say. Because there is truth in all things. You do have truth coming from t -Mot, whether y'all like it or not. There is truth. From Sarah Sudan Seti, there is truth from J.T. Riley. But that that uh, that avenue or way of doing things, that mythology, I just can't get with. But I respect him, so when I meet you in person, I will shake your hand, I will greet you, and show kindness to you, just like T-Mont shown me. I will give you uh, that type of honor. But I just cannot get with that mythology, that idea of how you're rolling. Because that rolling is going to disappoint you. Because if you attempt to really do what you're talking about, many people will get seriously uh, hurt. They will be jailed. And you will not benefit. You will not benefit. And you will not be looked upon as a hero. The same people that's hollering and screaming for you. 
they'll turn around and call you a fool and silly. Oh, what a shame. Did you see? Did y'all hear what happened to Seti? That's what these niggas would do for you. I'm trying and want you to avoid that. If we must die, if we must go to jail, then let it be worth it. J.T. Raleigh won. Brother got upset with me because I questioned his leadership. What he talks about, he wants to lead black folks. And uh, his use of profanity. I didn't say anything disrespectful to me. He can show you nowhere why I disrespected him. I questioned T.M. I questioned Seti. I questioned J.T. Riley. You can question me. There's nothing wrong with us questioning one another. But then when people have a problem with explaining themselves, then they get angry. Oh, did you? Angel Snuff Nup 7, this t -Mont. Angel Snuff Nup 7, this Seti. Angel Snuff Nup 7, J.T. Uh, this J.T. Riley one. No, Angel Snuff Nup 7. Question. Inquire. I want to know. And you can bring it to me. Folks do it all the time. I handle mine. Brother Seti has never said, I ain't never heard him, he never said or did anything disrespectful to me. So I will mirror Seti's video. I don't, I don't agree 100% with Seti's position. He's a young black man. I admire his spirit. I admire the power, the essence that's coming from him. And uh, until he does disrespect me or something, which he has not done, because he's not a coward. Say he'll speak up if he don't like me. He don't need your damn raggedy ass help. And I want to say this. You know, we go, we go through our... We go through things. And I never say that I don't say or have not done anything in error or wrong or whatever. I, that's not my intent. But we all have our little personalities and we all do things for some reason or another. But this door, this house, is going to remain open to dialogue and friendship with my brothers. Unless, of course, you can show without a shadow of a doubt, they have sold us out. So I can talk with t -Mont, I can talk with Seti, I can talk with J.T. Riley. This house is open. Because my overall view is what is beneficial to this struggle. And the brothers and the sisters want all of us to get along in some kind of way. I would hope that Brother T-Mont would tone down his videos, but he don't want to. So I can't get with that. But if he toned down his videos, then I can, I can get with, with him. But I cannot get with somebody who wants to call uh, black women, I don't care how they behave, nigger sisters and nigger dumb and nigger this and call us this and, and look and view us as animals and you black yourself. But since you're better, then you don't, you, you're not part of us. If that sister is a nigger, if that brother's a nigger, and she's a nigger sister, or, or we live in niggerdom, then I live in niggerdom too. And I want to help get us up out of this condition together. And the same goes with Brother Seti and J.T. Riley one. I have nothing against none of these people. So whenever you hear a faceless cowardly troll, they trying to stir up something. But see, my opinion and my ideas, I can handle mine. I don't have to talk about nobody. I don't have to try to bring nobody down. Everybody has, you have the right to question anybody. Bring your questions to me. Show it to me. In fact, I'll be happy to embrace those things. Because... You might see something in me that I, I don't see. And I want to become better. So you, you make me better. That's why I'm bringing this video to clear this issue up. I respect Brother t and Seti and J.T. Riley and all of y'all out there in YouTube land. I'm not better and smarter and greater. And if you listen to my videos, that's what I express. We are in this together. 
I think deep down inside, in all of our hearts, we want what is best and what is good for us. We should want to be a better people. Not a better slave. Not to bow down to others. But seek to evolve, to be independent and on your own and be mature and grown. Not to get special privileges in another man's house. That's not what I want. I don't can't say, I can't speak for T Mont. But I know that's what said he wants. He wants us independent and free. I don't know what JT Riley wants. His his view is I don't I really don't know exactly what his position is. But with that said, thank you for listening. I just wanted to clear that up. Excuse me for uh being a little tongue tied. Uh I just did a an hour video prior to this one, so I'm a little tired, but I just wanted to get that off my chest. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned on this channel because I don't want you to follow me nowhere. I want you to follow yourself. Open up your own mind. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. Think for yourself. With that said, thanks for listening. This was and is the Angel Snuff Nuff 7 and the Realities Temple on Earth. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Your host is his divine masculine brother administer Talik IBNRAD.